Here is my Visual Studio Code. Here is my interface, my prompt. I click the GPT magic and look what happens. I get a response back inside of Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look at this matplotlib plot, which works in real time. It uses a loop to update its values randomly and then plots it in real time. This was entirely written with GPT-3 inside of my Visual Studio Code. Now we're going to take a look at this. It's a bit of a magic happening there. Okay, let's close this. So let me just show you what's going on. Let's start with a few examples. Here in my Visual Studio Code, I have this function, setup interface. We're going to be taking a look at it here in a moment. It is collapsed at the moment. But if I run this, we're going to get a nice little TK Inter user interface, which is going to allow us to communicate with GPT-3 through OpenAI's API. We can write the prompt right here, and this large big button is going to be able to send our request to GPT-3, and the magic is it will return it straight right inside of our Visual Studio code. Let's ask for a list. Give me a list of 10 items. As soon as I click this, it's going to communicate with OpenAI's API, and we're going to get a response pretty quickly due to the short size of the list. Okay, here we go. We got a list, but we want it to be converted to a Python list. Also, we're going to copy this, give it as context, convert this to Python list. Let's see what happens. Here we go. It's converted to Python list. So far, so good. We can just delete this part. I haven't just assigned it to items. So let's just grab this again, give it as context, and then let's ask reverse each element and make a new list. See what happens. Here we go. Reversed items. Pen is reversed. Pencil. Oh, it's, it tried to do it itself. Well, it did. <laughs> so it failed with pencil. But this is not how we want to do it. We want to do it with an algorithm. So let's say, I just said reverse each element with a function and make a new list. Let's see what happens. Here we go. We get a reverse list. Let's just delete this. Oh, it wants to do the reverse list. Let me just fix this. Real quick. Oh, never mind. It's appending to it. Okay. So if we run this now, let's see what happens. Here we go. We get a reverse list and it is correct. So entirely written by GPT-3 inside of our Visual Studio Code. Next, let's take a look at how we can make this happen. Let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. All the important stuff is taking place under this function, setup underscore interface. Let's uncollapse it and open it. The first few lines of code are related to the TK inter user interface. Let's just run it. Yeah, right here. So in this interface, the first part is where we can put in our input. And there's a large button which sends the request to GPT-3. Here, the user input, which is the text input right here, is defined right here. Yeah, with some styling. This is just to pack it onto the canvas of the window of the TK inter user interface. Now, this is where the magic happens, this function. Send to GPT. We are assigning user input to be taken away from the input box. And then we're giving it as an argument to send to GPT function. Then the user input is assigned to get the input from the user input. And of course, we have to provide our OpenAI API key to OpenAI. Right here, we've imported it. I am using my environment variable to get my API key. This is a nice and secure way of doing it. I have talked about this in some of my other videos. You can just do a quick Google search and you'll find out how to do this. It's very easy. Then we check if a user had entered anything into this box. So if there is user input, this will return true. And then the following code will 
execute. This is the code that we're going to use to send the request to OpenAI's API to take step into 003 to get a response. And then we assign it to this variable, response variable. These are some of the parameters we can modify when we're interacting with GPT-3. Then we get the response back. Response comes back as a JSON object. So to get the actual text response, we have to find its appropriate index within its text. We are printing the response to the console. And after that, we are actually writing it at the end of this file that we're working on right now, the file that is actually running. Now, this is the real magic part of it. See, we are opening, if you pay attention up here, the file that we're working on right now is gpt underscore ide.py. We're opening it with the intention of appending to the end of it. And then with a line break, we are inputting the response to it and then writing onto the file. This is how we are able to get the response back from GPT-3 and then write it underneath the file. There's another button element. This is this button, which uses the command to recursively initiate this function sent to GPT every time it is clicked. And then the TK enter main loop. Because this function is recursive and because it is right appending to the end of it, we can actually get as many responses from GPT-3 as we want, and it will always write one after the other. And then, of course, we have to run the function outside of the function definition. I have terminated my TK into window. Let's just run it again to see how it works. It initiates the function and our TK into window pops up. So now we're ready to communicate with GPT-3 straight from our Visual Studio code with syntax highlighting. Let's try to recreate our matplotlib example. The prompt is start from zero, loop a thousand times, each time number increases or decreases by up to 50. Use matplotlib to plot it, import libraries. This is important because sometimes it neglects to do that. Not a big deal. And after that, we just all we have to do is just click this button. While it is white, the response is being returned. And when it turns blue, we have our response. If you pay attention here, we're getting a warning that random is not defined. Because GPT-3 failed to write the line which would import the random library. This is why I think one of the benefits of having GPT-3's response appear directly in, in your Visual Studio code is that you get syntax highlighting plus you get your errors ahead of time so all we have to do is just import random and then run this to see if it works but to be able to run this within this file we would have to terminate this window and stop the script because currently everything is functioning inside of a tk inter main loop after that i would have to comment this line out which is making a function call to this function and then run the script so to avoid all that hassle I just simply have another Visual Studio Code window up and I just copy paste the code from here into the new one and then run it. Just makes things easier. And now we get a nice little chart. But this is a static chart and we want to turn it into a real time chart. Now that we know our code works, what I found works best to manipulate the code is to give that code as an example. We can actually even keep our original prompt in as well. So after we pasted our code back in, I just said plot is real time with 0.1 second delay. And I just said new code. Let's see what happens. Now this is going to take a little bit longer because we are sending more tokens. Okay, now we're running into another quirk of working with GPT-3 this way. When you manipulate the file right here, because we have added something to it, import random, then the file changes and then there's a conflict now with the file that we're working on and the file that it's file that this function is trying to append at the end to. So let's open our terminal. Here in our Python command line, 
we actually see that it is the our request has been printed but it's not displaying in the visual studio code window to avoid this issue if you do choose to use gpt3 inside of your visual studio code all you have to do is whenever you make a change delete or update a line of code then make sure to save it by clicking Control s see when i try to do that it's saying that there is a conflict and if you get this pop-up all you have to do is just overwrite it alternatively you can also save it from the file menu see the shortcut is Control plus s after you've done that and you click the gpt magic button again and send the request one more time then you'll be able to get your response now if you don't make any changes to your document and click again then there will be no issues as we'll see in a moment yeah see and we now have two different answers to the same question but let's just get the first one i have pasted it into our working window and when we run it actually our first try works well it doesn't work always in the first try so be prepared to be able to make some changes or make new requests it's just part of dealing with gpt3 so here we go let's try it again let's run it again here we go so it really makes everything more convenient we could have also tried the second answer it had given us and to be able to end this so this uh, x doesn't work so you just have to come to your working terminal and keyboard interrupted by Control c that should do it let's see if the second answer it had given us is working just paste it this let's run it no the second one is a bit problematic that's okay though our first try had worked all in all, I really enjoy having GPT-3 give its responses directly inside of Visual Studio Code. I feel like my efficiency and my speed has increased maybe 40, 50 percent. Yeah, you can just set it up yourself. Here is the code. I hope you enjoy this video. If you find this content useful and if you're enjoying it, please give it a And if you'd like to be notified for future videos, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.